between the city and the residents of the city of Pompano. Uh, over the last couple of years, uh, most of the residents have felt that uh, their voice at City Hall and with city staff uh, is not being heard, has not been heard, uh, and essentially is not being paid attention to. And so the number one priority is to establish a, a spirit of cooperation between uh, city staff, commissioners, and uh, the residents. <clears throat> When we start talking about economic development and job development, I think it's a little bit more complex than just the CRA and uh, uh, that entity by itself. The city of Pompano has a budget roughly $213 million. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, CRA, CGB block grant funds, even we have neighborhood stabilization funds. There are a number of resources available uh, to try to uh, resolve some of the uh, crunch problems within our district. What happens is those resources appear to not have been steered correctly or straightforwardly towards resolving uh, a lot of those problems, i.e. neighborhood stabilization. Neighborhood stabilization simply means what it says, neighborhood stabilization. Just recently uh, it was passed where uh, District 3, although District Street 3 has a number of uh, uh, foreclosed homes, so does, uh, so does District 4. District 3 got something like $1.5 million of neighborhood stabilization money. Got no problems with that, but, you know, we'd like to see that pass along to some of the other districts. Uh, just recently, I was walking in Kendall Green, which is one of the areas, and I stay in uh, Kendall Lakes. There are a number of foreclosed homes in those areas. Uh, why couldn't we couldn't use some of those dollars for that? And when we start talking about crime and uh, prioritizing crime, I got to tell you, uh, I've been told that uh, serious crime in our area ha ha has not risen. Our problem is what I call in-your-face crime, mm -hmm. where there are a lot of folks uh, on the streets who are effectively passing drugs and doing drug deals in your face. I think we need to stand up in our community and, and, and push those kinds of uh, events back into the shadows. Uh, if some of you come from the 70s and, and 60s, as I, as, as, I, as I came from, those things were in the shadows. They may have been around, but they were in the shelves. Now, blatantly, they're in our face. And so another priority would be just to be a commissioner who would be forthcoming, standing up, straightforward, and defend uh, the district and, 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 when necessary, act as a uh, catalyst for some of the changes that need to, to happen in our district. It's called defend and advocate. Mm -hmm. That's what a commissioner is supposed to do. That's what I would do as a commissioner. Uh, I uh, do have an educational background, so of course, a part of my priority is always to push education, because education is one of those things that cannot be taken from you. When you fall down, you can get up with education. Even life skills, you can get back up. But I am saying to you, our district has an awful lot of needs. I'm going to close by saying this job development is a little bit more complicated than just the CRA. I am a member of the Board of Directors for the Pompano Beach Chamber of Commerce. We have Tourist Development Board. We have Small Business Development Board, which is in the county. I think there are a number of resources and entities. We just have to try to pull those resources and entities together to include people from our district because uh, oftentimes what we find is that folks come in, but we don't seem to garner or gather uh, those job opportunities for residents <coughs> who stay in the neighborhood. We strongly feel, the community strongly feels, that if tax dollars are coming from us, that we should be the recipients of a lot of those tax dollars. Now, folks, I, I, I want to say this. People get confused about we feel like we are old. No, we don't feel like we're old. We feel like we should be a part of.